USC Notre Dame this weekend. Your favorite USC Notre Dame memory memory is what? <laughs> well, I don't have many. I mean, <laughs> we, uh, you know, back then, back then they were rolling. You know, it's been seventeen hundred and eighty or seventeen hundred ninety days now, I think, since USC beat Notre Dame. Um, you know, Notre Dame's won the last three, or I think six of the last eight, and uh, you know, so it's been a different, a different deal. I mean, that's how rivalries are. You know, a lot of times you get the ebbs and flows of rivalries between two teams, and that was USC's heyday. Um, and, and then after Pete left, he obviously, uh, I think the S and USC stand for sanctions at that point, and they haven't really been able to recover since. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I mean, it was probably the 05 game. I mean, I, you know, we call it a play. Um, it was, it was a quarterback draw and Charlie told me early in that week, he's like, you're, we're going to, I'm going to call this play and you're going to run in for a touchdown and we're going to win the game. It's Charlie Weiss. And <clears throat> Charlie Weiss, our head coach at the yeah. time. Yeah. And, you know, he was in the green jerseys, everything building up to that game made it really special. Our, our pep rally, which traditionally was in the joy center back then they held it in the stadium because there were so many people who are in town for it. I think we had 50,000 or something like that for a pep rally, you know? Um, yeah, I, I couldn't exist during, during the whole COVID deal, but it was, it, you know, that play, I mean, reaching across the goal line, putting us, you know, ahead at that moment. Uh, it was, I mean, just everything coming to fruition. But at the same time, looking at the scoreboard going, we left them too much time. You know, that's honestly how I felt my heart is knowing how good Matt and Reggie were in that entire offense. Like, I, I knew we left too much time on the, on, the, on the board. And then when you realized that you had the uh, Bush push, um, did you have a good angle when you're watching that? Yeah, I saw it. I mean, I, I knew it was illegal, you know, but what, what happens between the lines during the game, no one's going to come back and say they saw anything different. Um, I mean, it's, it's a legal play now, uh, but back then it was illegal and the officiating was honestly awful down the stretch. I mean, the spot for that play in particular, it was a terrible spot, but you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, I, I would have hoped my running back would have done the same thing if it was me going in for a quarterback sneak. Um, and, and that's what you do to try to win the game. I, I honestly blame I blamed our PA speaker in the stadium because everyone rushed the field. And I'm thinking like, look, if the officials feel too much pressure, maybe they just call it game over and everyone runs off the field and everyone's still celebrating, but they, uh, they made sure everyone cleared the field and they got the chance to kind of collect themselves and have that one final play. So um, it was, uh, it was an incredible atmosphere. It was obviously um, a pretty hard loss to take, but it, it, was, it was a very fun journey. That entire week was very memorable. Okay, but you're going to see Liner and Reggie Bush on Saturday. How long does it take for that conversation to come up? Well, here's what you have to understand at Fox. There's a lot of USC alum who then transition over to work for Fox. So I'm constantly reminded of it. It's not like we've got a bunch of Notre Dame alums who are like trying to figure out a way of not putting it in there. Like they, they actually referenced it last week. I mean, we were even playing last week. <laughs> Both teams were on buys, but they still, they still referenced it. So I can't, I can't get away from it. I just keep trying to remind them like, you know, again, you know, you guys have, uh, you guys put Aunt Becky in a jail cell or whatever with some of the stuff going on with USC. I keep her body of all the dirt that's going on right now. I was like, maybe Southern Cal should focus on that. And not so much replaying a highlight from 15 years ago. You did a full house reference for these guys? I love Aunt Becky. I'm just saying. I mean, it seems like they got a lot of people paying to find their way in there. You know, my son and, and one of my daughters went to USC. And how they went there, I have no idea. On their own merits, Dan, by the way. You got something to tell me? No. You got something to tell me, No, Dan? you know, but the funny thing is, is my daughter called me when this whole thing broke. And she said, she said, Dad, swear to me that you did not pay for me to get in USC. I go, what are you talking about? I, I said, I'm paying tuition. She goes, but you didn't, you didn't bribe anybody, did you, Dad? I go, no, no. I, and then I say to my son, I said, I, I didn't hear from you. He goes, no. I knew you didn't have to prime for me to get into USC. Well, that's that's weird because I've been on their campus. I remember seeing this Patrick building. Yeah, I was wondering. I was like, I wonder who, I wonder who donated that out here. It's a beautiful building, by the yep. way. If Thank that you. is you, Dan. Yes, it kudos is. Kudos to you. Yeah, yeah kudos yeah. to you. Yeah, it was just a donation. It was a gift, right. Brady. Right. Yeah, yeah. And just a gift. 